Okay, so this is the part part hole bar model, and it's used when you have a single unknown. Um, any grade, it's quite hard to use this one. It's a single step problem, and it's the quickest and easiest of the three different types of bar model. So, looking at addition and subtraction as inverse operations, here are the two ways that you represent addition and subtraction. So, for addition, here we have an unknown hole but we know our two parts, so addition is part plus a part equals a whole. Whereas when we have subtraction, we have our total, and we have one part, but we're missing our second part. So using this strategy, our whole, take away the part that we know, will tell us what our unknown part is. When we look at multiplication and division as inverse operations, it's the same thing. Multiplication does not have a total, but it has equal groups multiple times. So in this case, it's 14 four times, which we can see down here, 14 times four. With division, we have our total, and in this case, we know the equal number of groups. We just don't know how many is shared equally among those groups. But through the word of question, we know that it's shared equally. So this is just a visual representation of multiplication and division and their similarities and where they slightly differ just so you know the correct uh, operation to choose depending on the question and that's where this flow chart comes in handy so when you get a question you look do I have the total if the answer is yes it means that you must be missing parts um, because otherwise there's there has to be an unknown element to the question so then you need to ask yourself, does it need to be split into equal parts or groups or not? If the answer is yes, that would then be a division problem because you would have the total. You know it needs to be split equally. You just don't know how many is in each group. But if it wasn't, you have the total. You have one part. You need to work out what that missing part is. So you'd work this one out, 55 take away 40, for example. So this is a really good visual cue to, again, select the correct operation. So if we look at this word of question, Emma buys 18 metres of red cloth and 15 metres of blue cloth. What is the total length of cloth? So using the cube strategy, which is circle a key number, underline the question, box the key maths action words, and before we do our evaluate and draw, solve and check, we start by circling the key maths numbers we underline the question and we box the key math section word. So looking at this, we know that we have two parts and we're trying to find the total. So we have an unknown total. We have our red part, our blue part. Red part is worth 18 metres and blue 15 metres. So we've got two known parts, an unknown whole. We use addition to find this answer. So the total length of the cloth is 33 metres. Moving through to this one, so some watermelon and pear pieces weighed 125 grams altogether. The watermelon pieces weighed 100 grams. How much did the pear pieces weigh? So again, we go through, we circle key numbers, we underline the question, and we box the key math section words. Okay, so looking at this, there were 125 grams altogether, which means the watermelon and pear combined had to equal 125, so we have our total. We know the watermelon weighed 100 grams, so we have one part. So we know that this is a subtraction problem and we need to find that unknown part. So our total was 125, and our watermelon pieces were 100 grams, which leaves the pair an unknown quantity. So when we have a total and a part, we subtract that to find our missing part. In this case, 125 take away 100 gives us 25 grams. So the pair pieces weighed 25 grams. Now looking at this question here, Zach spent one fifth of his savings on a gift and one half of the remainder on a book. The book cost $12. How much was Zach's original savings? So again, this question, when we break it down, we need to start just first step, circle key numbers, underline the question, box key math action words. And it's really important we do this step each time. 
So in this example, so Zach spent one fifth of his savings, then one half of the remainder, and that was twelve dollars. Then how much was Zach's original savings? So how much money did Zach start with? So there's a lot of information going on in this question. We need to just go through one step at a time. So to start off with, we don't know our total. That's what we're trying to find. But what we do know is that Zach spent one-fifth on a gift of his money. So we represent that by colouring it one out of five equal parts. So this bar model represents one-fifth. Then the next part of the question says that he spent half of the remainder on a book. So again, this is where the misconceptions come in. It's not half of the total, it's half of the remainder. So there are four equal parts remaining. Half of four is two, which means the book here, in this case, is two-fifths, and that's worth $12. So now because these are all equal parts, if two parts together are worth $12, if we divide it by two, each individual part must be worth $6. So if that's the case, each individual part is worth $6, we have an equal part five times, six fives are 30. So Zach originally had $30 in savings.